This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 32, on the 24th of October 2013, an interview with Kieran Donahue, founder of Playlists.net. This week's show is sponsored by media law firm Sheridans at sheridans.co.uk. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show, bringing you the best music tech companies and digital music projects around. And this week it's a real pleasure to welcome to the show Kieran Donahue, founder of uh, Playlists.net. So hi Kieran, and how's it going today? Morning, hi, um, very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on the show, I really appreciate it. It's absolutely a pleasure to have you, and you know, big, I've been a big fan of uh, the company since you got started. Uh, and so, we're going to talk about uh, the company, its evolution, and uh, you know, the current, uh, the newest release of last week, which was very exciting. So, uh, first of all, what is Playlist.net in a nutshell? Um, okay, in a nutshell, um, it's two things. One, it's a music discovery platform for Spotify. So the idea is that you come to the site or use our apps to find new music to listen to on Spotify uh, via our 146,000 curated playlists. Um, secondly, it's kind of a, a platform for taste makers, um, artists, labels, brands, or the man in the street to kind of show off their curation skills and to you know gain an audience for their playlists. Yeah, absolutely. And so, how how did the company get started, and uh, what was the first iteration of it? Um, back in 2009, um, I got a beta test of Spotify when it was in you know very very early days. Only you know hadn't even launched in the UK yet, and uh, I kind of you know had a play around of it and loved the concept, loved the idea of get all these you know tracks for free streaming to your PC. And I was, I was blown away from it. Um, and after a couple of days, though, I kind of after I played my favorite albums and listened to my favorite artists, I didn't really have anywhere to go. So I thought, well, you know, needs to be something. Maybe I can come up with a service and be part of this amazing product, which yeah. gives people, uh, you know, this layer of discovery that sits on top of Spotify. So uh, kind of got together with a guy who knew who designs websites. I'm not technical in the slightest, and we put together a WordPress website. Um, you know, sharemyplace.com, and that was the very first iteration of the site. And just through kind of word of mouth and talking to friends, we got them to, you know, put playlists on the site. And it just all grew from there, really. Absolutely. And so uh, how did that go from being a website to uh, becoming a very well-known Spotify app? When did you decide to make that transition? And was the company already uh, doing well in terms of traffic at that point? Yeah, I mean, it started off and it grew kind of slowly but steadily. And we, we, we got some really good tracks. We got some really good um, press um, just through viral growth. And that gave us kind of, that attracted some uh, outside investors who kind of came to me and said, you know, we think this has got potential, this has got promise, why don't we kind of do it properly and, you know, kind of go full time, uh, you know, kind of relaunch, you know, um, build a professional site and, you know, see where this takes us. So back in, it was kind of 2010, uh, we got some, some kind of small seed investment right. um, into the business and, you know, we took it full time, took on some staff. And that's where we started, you know, getting really serious and, you know, um, building the Spotify app, the mobile apps and kind of really pushing it out there. Absolutely. And so uh, how, how do you feel like the Spotify app uh, impacted on the traffic of the site? And I know that, you know, there's a, a, lo a lot of companies have to value the pros and cons of the Spotify apps because, of course, there's no way to monetize them at the moment, but they're a very good platform for visibility. So how did that work out for you? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, there's nowhere to monetize it, but it's, you know, we felt, you know, because our site, our service is 100% Spotify, we'll need to be in a Spotify app ecosystem. So we have, you know, we built the app, we were one of the first to launch in 2011. Um, it's there now, we're currently, we're pretty much kind of a top 10 app um, globally. Um, in terms of traffic, it doesn't bring us as much traffic in as the website does. Right. Um, you know, the website still brings us, you know, significantly more traffic, but it's still you know, a decent amount of users. And the fact that, you know, the app obviously is in the Spotify client, it makes interaction, you know, a lot easier. And there's certain things you can do in there, which you, it's kind of harder to do on the website. So it has its, it's definitely has its benefits, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, how do you feel users are, you know, there's a, hung, a real hunger for uh, discovering music and finding better ways to, uh, you know, find the curated playlists and, of course, uh, the success of uh, uh, playlists.net, uh, which uh, some people would, would still probably remember as Sharma playlists uh, if they haven't uh, been, uh, uh, you know, uh, keeping up in the last few months of what's happening with the company. Uh, you know, the success of the company is a testament of that, of that hunger. So uh, how do you feel uh, you can bring a, a new element to the equation to really enhance the experience of users on that front? 
Um, well, I mean, a lot of our traffic comes, um, well, 70% of our traffic comes from search engines. Right. So we see what people are looking for. And, it, you know, it's not just terms like Spotify playlists. It's things like, you know, very kind of niche terms, you know, such as, uh, you know, House Music 2013 or, you know, maybe looking for yeah. the soundtracks that were played in certain TV shows or, you know, um, motivational music, all this kind of thing. So we kind of see what people are looking for and get, get us to the site. And, you know, we feel that because we've got, you know, 146,000 players right now, we're kind of we're meeting pretty much every demand there is. And if we see any niches or any gaps of people are searching for things which we don't have, then, you know, we'll build them, we'll, we'll get them on the site. Sure. Um, we just, we're just very keen to um, make sure we have lots of different ways for people to dis to discover music because, you know, you may not even know what sort of music you, you listen to on the, on the morning, for example, right. but because we've got moods now, as well as genres, you can say, right, you know, give me, an, give me a soul playlist or give me an energetic playlist, you know? So we just, as long as we have uh, as many different tools uh, as possible for people to discover music, we feel as though we're kind of keeping on top of the game and that's certainly what we do, you know? Absolutely. And so uh, looking at uh, the ecosystem of uh, of playlists on that uh, there's been a major upgrade uh, last week uh, uh, with the mobile app uh, and i've got the ios version uh, uh, which is uh, fantastic so uh, you added a bunch of new features which go uh, above and beyond what is uh, essentially just a, a curation of the playlist you know you create the playlists uh, there you can navigate by genre there's charts in there uh, there's moods uh, uh, and so that part seems to be really becoming uh, a very powerful tool for people to, to navigate through. So how have you found the reaction to the release of the app and how long did it take you to do this overhaul? Um, yeah, thanks, man. The reaction has been very much positive all around. Uh, it's taken around about kind of six months behind the scenes to build and develop the app because we wanted to make sure it was kind of as many features in it as, as humanly possible. We didn't just want to launch a kind of a basic product, but let's launch it and go all in and cram as many good stuff as we could into it. Um, so the reaction has been great, and you know, one of the, one of the, there's two really good things which I like about the app, and one is that users can now um, use the app as a Spotify player. So right. even if you don't have playlists um, on playlist.net, you can still play them through the playlist.net app, just through your Spotify library, and what yeah. you can do, you know, kind of a couple of clicks as well is quickly and for the first time ever upload them to the site through the app. So I think that's a really nice feature and users can even use the iPhone to take a picture to use as the playlist cover art. Um, so that, I think that's kind of quite cool. And we also just launched the ability to pin playlists to locations. Yeah. Uh, and the idea behind that is uh, many things. But you know, let's say, for example, you, you go to a gym and you have a regular workout playlist for that gym. You can pin it to that location. And other people who maybe go to that gym and want to listen to some new music and see there might be, you know, 10, 20 or 100 playlists pinned to that location, you know, designed for use when you're at the gym, you know, or it could be you, you're in a, your coffee shop and you find the coffee shop's playing some really good music, you know, you wouldn't know what it is, you know, the coffee shop could pin their playlist to their location and everybody can enjoy, you know, so there's, I'm really kind of excited about, you know, uh, those two things specifically, but um, Absolutely. yeah. The, the reception the app has been really good I'm very very pleased yeah that, that's uh, that's great uh, and uh, the geolocation side of it is something that a lot of people are feeling like it's the future of uh, of uh, uh, music services uh, as far as playlists are concerned there's so much that can be done uh, on that front we've seen uh, last month a partnership between songs and foursquare to uh, do a similar thing to to pin uh, uh, songs are channels, uh, radio channels to specific locations and venues, which is uh, which uh, can be curated by the venues themselves, which is great. And so uh, this really c comes into that that vertical and and uh, is going to be a very powerful tool, I think, for people to to use. Uh, one of the things that, of course, people I think are wondering all, all, all over. Uh, especially listeners of DMT, would be uh, the question of interoperability and perhaps adding more services because, of course, uh, uh, Playlist on that is uh, very much tied to Spotify at the moment, uh, but uh, there's a bunch of people that are using Deezer, Audio, and other services too. So uh, what's your approach on this front, and do you feel like you're going to be able to integrate uh, other services on top as well? Sure. I mean, up to now, we've always, um, as you know, been 100% Spotify, and that's purely because we have a good relationship with the guys, and we think they're kind of leading, you know, the, the, the paid streaming subscription service market, which I think they are. You know, but I guess, especially in the last kind of 12 months, uh, where you've seen kind of some really good growth from audio, you know, Deezer, yeah. uh, you've got kind of beats music launching imminently as well. I think 
I think it's maybe it's just time to, uh, you know, just have a look outside of Spotify and, you know, certainly not move away, but certainly see if there's any opportunities to be had with talking to these other players and, you know, just creating a kind of, you know, what we've always wanted to be, which is, you know, the ultimate kind of playlist portal, yeah. for want of a better word. Um, but I just think up until now, the time hasn't been right, but that's maybe something I think going forward we'll, we'll certainly look at and address. Yeah, great. And, and looking at the app, there's a couple of features that I really love uh, because uh, they're, they're so uh, simple and you think, you know, that you'd be able to find them uh, easily somewhere else. But uh, for example, the the uh, latest releases, it's actually not the easiest thing in the world to find the list of latest uh, major releases that have come up on Spotify. You have to go and find specific sites that are just dealing with that uh, you know, uh, in depth, uh, and and Spotify itself, because of the the, the the new sort of browse tab tab that opens up when you open up the application, it doesn't show you the latest releases. It shows the recommendations based on what you, on what you have listened to recently. And so, how did you go about? How, did you feel like there was a gap in that, and and that's why you decided to add that feature in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the, the we we launched a feature when Spotify decided to remove the what's new feature in the, in the client and. Right. Uh, it was like this huge kind of outcry from the the Spotify community saying, oh, wow, you've, 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 you've lost what's new and where can we find new releases now? And to be honest with you, I never thought what's new was that good based on everything you've just said. It doesn't give you a full list. I thought, well, there's definitely an opportunity there. Yeah. But like you, it's it, there's no kind of, there's no central database or easy way to get new releases um, every week. So, you know, because we've been around for a few years, we've got good, good relationships with all the record labels. So we just go to that guys directly and they send us the kind of the links every week. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's not an easy thing to compile by any stretch of imagination. But I think it's an important service. And I think it's the easiest way to do it is like, you know, here's all new releases for any given week. You know, we're not going to decide right. what you can see, what you can't see. Here's them all, and you choose. Uh, I think that's kind of the best way to do it. I mean, this week, for example, we've We've got 105 albums already, you know, and it's yeah. it's only it's only Wednesday. There'll be some more which drop in kind of Germany on Friday and throughout the week. So it's uh, it gets harder to keep every week, but I think it's definitely worthwhile to do because we've got a, a lot of good feedback from it as well and. Yeah, uh, I absolutely. think it's just a, a nice, easy feature to have. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, I guess, like, the, um, I was wondering whether you're going to be able to also allow uh, adding those albums to playlists at some point. That's, I think that's the one feature that I think it's missing at the moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we are kind of um, limited in what we can do with the Spotify From the API. API. Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, so uh, there may be some technical aspects of that, but I think the first the first step is just get them on there. Yeah. Then we can start of build into that. And I should say that, I think that's a really good suggestion. If we can do that in a, a maybe a later build, we'll certainly do it. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, I would uh, thoroughly recommend for anybody that is a Spotify subscriber to uh, go and install uh, the playlists.net app right now. Is it available on Android as well? Um, we have an old version on Android, but that's right. currently getting redesigned and rebuilt as awesome. well. So I'll just uh, hold on for maybe a few more weeks and we'll get the Android one out as well. That's fantastic. Yeah, the iOS app is uh, absolutely beautiful. It works uh, great. And, uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, great to see an app that is promising some... Uh, new discovery aspects uh, actually come through and, and deliver on, on that on that promise because uh, it's, it's very difficult to find uh, new music on Spotify as everybody knows the problem of discovery is still a, a pretty large one and so uh, I think you're you're addressing a pretty big need of, of, of people uh, finally I guess like I'd, I'd have to ask you about uh, some of the controversies that are going around uh, in regards to uh, playlists uh, and we know we'll know about the uh, ministry versus Spotify problems that are happening at the moment and uh, you've been uh, you wrote, actually wrote a fantastic blog post on, on the subject uh, talking about you know your, your point of view on, on this uh, and so how do you feel like uh, the debate around uh, copyright of playlists uh, uh, is going to pan out and is it just going to be a case of uh, having to steer clear of the the bigger brands like the Ministry of Sounds of this world? Um, yeah it's a difficult and complex uh, situation isn't it and you know yeah. I, I, I don't know all the answers all, all, all I would say is um, I just think Ministry of Saudi aren't making any any friends by what they're doing I just think there's a different way to approach it and I understand where they're coming from because you know their yeah. business is mainly curating albums I totally get that I just think they should look at and see what now music are doing and again I know it's a different model because now music kind of have licenses and follow their own songs in the industry don't but I think just look at you know kind of what now and other kind of um, you know curation labels are doing and just embracing and finding a way to work with you know streaming music services and not against them. I just think it doesn't create you any kind of friends and 
it's just going to be expensive for everybody involved. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, if we don't have ministry of sound play this on our site, which we don't, you know, it's fine. There's going to be other people there who will fill that gap and fill that need. You know, there's, there's lots of experts in, you know, dance music and certain in house music and all sorts of genres. So if they don't, if ministry of sound don't do it, they'll just lose what they've, you know, what they've put all these years to make, to build up. Yeah. And somebody else will come in and do it instead, you know. So I just think, uh, you know, it's, a, it's definitely, it's, not, it's a tricky situation from a legal yeah. standpoint. It's very, very complex um and be interesting to see what so, happens in, in the kind of the course if it gets that far absolutely but i would just say you know guys just you know embrace it don't fight it you know? yeah yeah it's, it's it's you know we all know that it, it is a problem for them just because of the business model that they have and you know that it's in their interest to try and preserve that business model as long as possible while it's still working very well for them so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the courts and also because you know it's a UK court so uh, it's going to be interesting to see if, if there is a ruling in, in the UK whether it's going to apply to the UK alone and then whether they're going to have to take that fight to, to uh, courts in different territories uh, or whether that's going to apply uh, internationally so it's going to be quite interesting to see to see how it all pans out but again uh, check out playlist.net a fantastic way of discovering new playlists and uh, adding your own playlist as well uh, i use it all the time so thanks so much kieran for joining me oh thank you very much really enjoyed it and thanks for listening to the dmt one to one you can find all the info on the show on digitalmusictrends.com and follow through the links uh, to the dmt one to one i also produce a weekly show on the uh, news in the music tech industry uh, it goes out uh, again every thursday or friday usually and uh, uh, you can find that on digitalmusictrends.com as well and that's all for this week i really hope you enjoyed the show i'm going to leave you with a short information piece recorded with this week's sponsor media law from sheridan's this is the last of the series so i thank them for for their support of DMT over the last couple of months. I'm here with Tahir Bashir and it's great to be talking about uh, digital service providers today. It's our last segment of a uh, five uh, segment series. So uh, hi Tahir and great to have you on. Thanks as ever for having me on again. And so uh, we're going to talk about timing uh, first of all. So uh, I've been on a startup before and timing is essential uh, in the way you structure your business because uh, a lot of these content deals can take a long time, you know, six months to a year uh, to achieve enough content deals to actually be able to launch a service. And so how do you structure your business to survive these timings uh, given that they can be so extended and kind of unpredictable as well? Yeah, um, I think the first thing is that the founders of the business uh, should be realistic about the timing that these deals take. Make sure that they have uh, someone who's helping them to kind of speed things up. So as a lawyer, you know, I, I very much uh, appreciate the fact that acceleration is really important. And if you're yeah. doing things too slowly, that's a death knell in the business. Um, so trying to keep things moving quickly, reacting um, and not sitting on things. Uh, but from the business's perspective, make sure your team is structured the right way. So Typically with a digital service provider, make sure that you know, if you're hiring people, well, tr try and keep it lean, but if you're hiring people, those are the people that you need at that particular time. So for example, when you first start, you tend to have more technology uh, individuals uh, working on the product themselves. As it grows and you've got the product right, then you move to the sales and marketing team um, and the technology team tends to reduce at that point. Um, so structuring that the right way is really important because otherwise you've got people who've got skill sets that are not being used. Yeah. From a lawyer's perspective, um, you know, some of the things that I try and do is uh, make sure that uh, you know, I, I've sat in with the team you know, whilst they're building the product, uh, just to understand the product well and point out any kind of dead ends, uh, put together our own deal terms. I think that's quite important because sometimes you can react to um, deal terms which are provided to you which don't fit your model. So if you can have your own deal terms which you can present, that at the very least, will speed up the negotiations. Yeah. Um, and, and in best, they'll get accepted. Yeah, sure. um, so, yeah. That's great. And talking about the, you know, we're talking about your role as, as a law firm, and, uh, what's the best way for them to, to make use of, of your time or, or, or any law firm's time and make sure that they maximize that time so that they don't end up spending a huge amount of money uh, and you know, end up without the results they need? Yeah, uh, the communication with the lawyers are important. Yeah. So if you've got the whole team talking to the lawyer all the time, that's expensive. So make sure you uh, you focus who is actually dealing with the lawyers. Usually it's the business development person or the person responsible for licensing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I act for um, uh, technology companies which are not to do with music, and they still have the same types of issues. So there's, you know, 
the investment, you know, getting those investment deals, get the money in, there's the rights, there's the building of the business, the employment aspects. So from a lawyer's perspective, what are the things that we can do to help? Um, we can help point out the types of issues that need to be dealt with. Uh, we can help analyze the model from a, from a, a legal rights perspective. We can help, you know, the right lawyers, we can help uh, introduce to investors and to content owners, the right people. So you're speeding up that uh, process and uh, they're dealing with the right people. But Thank you very much and uh, thanks for this interesting uh, uh, comments on, on digital service providers. I hope uh, listeners are going to find them. I'm sure they're going to find them really interesting. Yeah, I wish we had more time because there's so many more things to talk about. But yeah, it's been good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks a lot.